Hey everyone, today I want to go over my top three miking techniques for acoustic guitar. And this will pretty much go for any sort of acoustic string instruments, acoustic guitar, Nash tune guitar, mandolin, pretty much everything. I'm going to show you guys my top three choices for techniques for mic setup, and I'm going to let you hear them. And then we're also going to talk about mic choices and when to choose what microphones and when to choose what miking technique. So let's get into it. Okay, so the first technique I'd like to talk about and the one that I use by far the most often is this kind of XY pattern. Uh, I'm going to go over the details here in a minute, but it sounds like this. Okay, now whenever I post photos of this online, people always assume it's XY or that's not true XY. People get real worked up about this not being the correct XY. So what I do is I use more of a narrow XY. XY is 90 degrees, um, and so the, the two microphones would be exactly 90 degrees uh, angle from each other. Now, I personally like a little bit narrower pattern than that, so I go more like a 70 or 75 degree angle, and I like the sound of this way better. It gives me a lot more flexibility when mixing, and I just like it better. Now for this particular technique, I like this angle, and I usually will want the microphones somewhere between 12 and 16 inches away from the guitar, uh, and the guitar aimed straight on, and I want the microphones straight out from the neck joint. And so that way one of them is pointed, you know, about the seventh fret and the other one is pointed about the sound hole somewhere in there. And this is my starting place and then I will kind of experiment from here. But this is my most common setup that I, that I always start with and then I tweak from here. Okay, so the next technique that I use kind of second most often is setup wise the same, same thing. Same angles, same distance from the guitar, same everything except I've swapped out the small diaphragm condenser that is pointed towards the sound hole. I've swapped it out for a large diaphragm condenser, and I'm gonna get into how I choose what to use in a second, but this is the next technique. Small diaphragm condenser pointed at the neck, large diaphragm condenser pointed <laughs> at the bridge, and this is what that sounds like. Okay, the next technique is just using one or the other, and I'm going to let you hear both a large diaphragm condenser and a small diaphragm condenser. And then, again, we're going to talk about why in a second. But here is the large diaphragm condenser, uh, same distance, 12 to 16 inches away from the guitar, pointed about between the neck joint and the sound hole somewhere in there. So here's what that sounds like. Okay, so same distance, same angle, same setup, just with a small diaphragm condenser instead of the large diaphragm condenser. Here we go. Now for those of you that don't know, this is what's called a small diaphragm condenser microphone. This is what's called a large diaphragm condenser mic. These are sometimes referred to as pencil mics as well. Okay, now while there is some overlap between small diaphragm condensers and large diaphragm condensers, typically speaking across most microphones, a small diaphragm condenser is going to be a little bit punchier, have a little bit faster transient response. They're going to be a little bit more aggressive. They're going to be a little bit smaller sounding, and part of this is just due to the smaller uh, diaphragm that's in them. That lighter weight, smaller diaphragm is going to move a little bit faster than a large diaphragm condenser, and also it's going to pick up a smaller physical area. Large diaphragm condenser is going to be just exactly the opposite of that. Typically, most large diaphragm condensers are going to have a little bit slower transient response in comparison to a small diaphragm condenser. Most large diaphragm condensers are gonna be just a little bit bigger sounding and sometimes a little bit warmer sounding. So those sound characteristics help inform me on when to use which microphone for the song and for the context of the song. If I'm doing a song that's just an acoustic and a vocal, well I want the biggest sounding acoustic I can possibly get. And so a lot of times I will use this large diaphragm with the small diaphragm in that narrow XY pattern. 
To me, this is the biggest, thickest sound of the techniques that I use, and it helps the acoustic stand on its own more than the other techniques. Now, if I'm doing an average song with drums and bass and other instruments in it, I'm commonly gonna reach for my first technique, which is the two small diaphragm condensers in that narrow XY pattern, same, same as we talked about before. Now, the reason why I would do that is because the two small diaphragm condensers are a little bit punchier and can, can poke through a denser mix a little bit better than the small diaphragm with the large diaphragm. And so the denser the song gets, the more I move in this direction that we're headed here. I don't need the acoustic guitar to take up quite as much space on its own, but I do need to, it to pop out from between other instruments. Now the next step in this same direction would be just the large diaphragm condenser. Taking away the second microphone certainly narrows the, the sound of the acoustic instrument, but it also lets it punch through a mix a little bit harder. So on a really dense mix, I'm gonna move to a single microphone as opposed to a pair if the acoustic instrument is happening alongside a lot of other instrumentation. And I find that this helps me poke that acoustic instrument out through a really dense mix. So, but the first step in this is with a large diaphragm condenser, and then as I want it to be even more punchy and, and punch out through an even denser mix, then I'll move to a single a small diaphragm condenser microphone. And that is kind of how I decide what microphones to use and what technique to use, and it's all based on what is appropriate for the song and how do I get the end result that I'm after. The, the idea is, not to always necessarily get the biggest, most awesome acoustic sound that you can possibly muster up, because sometimes it's really hard to get that to poke out of a mix in a dense mix. Mm -hmm. So always be conscious of the goal and what's appropriate for the song. Know exactly what you're trying to go after and then choose the microphone and choose the technique that gets you the result that you're already after. Now a couple side notes here that, that I wanna make sure that I touch on for this video is that uh, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll put these microphones up, regardless of the setup, I'll put the microphone up and I'll just strum the guitar and move around like this. And I'll just move around and listen in my headphones to what sounds the best. And I will fine tune that one single degree at a time until I find what I feel sounds the best for the instrument that I'm using for the room that I'm in and for the, the microphone and the mic technique that I'm using. The other thing that I wanna mention is when you're using two microphones for something like this, especially in some sort of an XY pattern, absolutely need to make sure that the capsules of these microphones are perfectly aligned. In some of those overhead shots, rewind and take a look at some of those overhead shots, you'll notice that the capsule of the small diaphragm condenser over the large diaphragm condenser, or when I'm using two small diaphragm condensers, the capsules are perfectly perfectly on top of each other. You wanna make sure that you do this to avoid any phasing issues. Now these different techniques and the room that you're in and the guitar that you're playing and the pick that you're using and the how you're physically playing the guitar are going to be way more, they're gonna have way more of an impact than what kind of microphone that you're using. So this is a 47, this is a, a Perlman TM-47 and this is a Neumann KM-184. And I had a pair of KM-184s when I was using both small diaphragm condensers. What I want to get across to you is I don't really care if you're using a warm WA-84 or a Neumann KM-184 or some Sheps or, it doesn't really matter the position of the microphone, the room that you're in and what the room sounds like, what it's treated like, the guitar itself and how you're playing it and the position as you're moving back and forth, these things have infinitely more impact on the sound of the acoustic instrument than if you're using a $100 microphone or a $4,000 microphone. I'm in no way gonna pretend that a $100 microphone sounds better than a $4,000 microphone or as good in most situations, because it doesn't, but this is something that I feel like a lot of people miss. Moving this microphone from here to here is a bigger difference than swapping the microphone entirely. So play around with your setup, experiment, have a vision in your mind of, of what you're after for the song, and then experiment with some of these techniques. I have landed on these out of many, many, many techniques. There are far too many ways to do this that I could possibly cover in this video. So these are my three favorites, and I hope that it helped you, and I hope that you guys have some awesome recording sessions, and that this improves your recording sessions. Thanks guys for watching. Hey, don't forget to subscribe 
subscribe and, and click a like and drop me a comment if you like this one and uh, f share with your friends. If you found this useful, I'd very much appreciate it if you would share with your friends. There's links in the description below for all the gear that I use all the time, so you can find all of that down below. And uh, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.